for channel 71 and Comcast channel 25. Meetings can also be viewed live from the city website, www.cityofcapitola.org. Our technician tonight is Ben Thompson. Despite being physically closed to the public, participation is still possible. Public comments can be emailed to council for their attention. That should be planning commission for their attention during tonight's meeting. Identify the item you wish to comment on in your email subject line. Email comments will be accepted starting now up until I announce that public comments for that item is closed. Each emailed comment will be read aloud for up to three minutes or displayed on a screen. Each public comment period will remain open for three minutes period. Emails received by public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us outside of the comment period outline will not be included in the record. Lastly, we want to thank you for your indulgence tonight as we adapt to the necessities of the moment. Next item is the roll call. Commissioners Christensen. We. Ruth. We can note for the record that everyone is present by uh, uh, Zoom remote if we don't have anyone to do the roll call. Oh, we can't. Uh... We have actually a roll call on our uh, devices. Yes. So. Well, everyone is present. The minutes should show. The code. Next is the Pledge of Allegiance. So I guess everyone turn their mute off so we can hear you. And I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Of America. <laughs> 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 That was not our best rendition, but it was <laughs> next oral communication. Any additions or deletions to the agenda? No additions or deletions to the agenda. However, I would like to suggest that item 4C be moved to 4B um, because our chair will have to recuse himself from item 4B if that could be moved 1601 41st Avenue to item 4C. Well, with that in mind, then will there be a director's report? There will be a director's report. Okay, so I'll, I'll remain for that then. Okay. All right. So, um, Next is the opportunity for public comment. And this puts us in the, uh, our first uh, opportunity to try out the remote public comment uh, system. So uh, we will need to take a short break to see if any public comments come in. So we'll re resume the meeting at 7.07. Currently, we're taking public comment for anything not on the agenda. We, it looks like we do have a public comment for a future item. So you, you want to hold that until that item comes up? Yes, we'll hold that until that item comes up.
Again, we're doing public comment for anything not currently on the agenda. And we're running it for three minutes. We're two minutes in. And at this point, we have no items that have not been posted on the agenda in our public comment for email. Okay, that's the end of the public comment. Any commission comments? No comment from Commissioner Ruth. No comment from Commissioner Ruth. No comment from Commissioner Wilk. And Commissioner Christensen, I assume none. Uh, no comment from Commissioner Christensen. I'm sorry, I was muted. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it takes us to uh, item number three, the consent calendar. There's one item on the consent calendar, 115 Santa Fe Avenue. There are a couple of commissioners who will not vote on this. Do we have, does anyone wish to remove this from the consent calendar? So that includes members of the public. If any member of the public wishes to have uh, the 115 San Jose Avenue item uh, heard with a full hearing, they need to send in an email right now. And that email can be sent to public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us. Is that screen still up? It's on my. Uh, it is. Okay. Oh, I think we do. Okay, uh, seems unlikely we're going to get any, because uh, we rarely get this anyway. And uh, mm -hmm. if someone should come in later, we'll um, reconsider the item. But uh, do we have a motion on the consent calendar? So moved. This is Commissioner Welchon to approve the consent calendar. Commissioner Ruth seconds. Okay, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Christensen. Uh, you want me to do the roll call, Katie? I guess I think we're having a problem with uh, Liz's microphone, so that would be fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Commissioner Ruth. Aye. Commissioner Wick. Wilk. Wilk. Abstain. <laughs> yeah, okay. And uh, Commissioner Welch, I got the two kind of melded. Yes. Okay, and, and the uh, chair abstains, so that's carry three to nothing, the two abstentions. Next item is the public hearing for 1515 Prospect Avenue. Uh, staff report, please. Okay. Okay, good evening, commissioners. This is Director Herlihy and um, 1515 Prospect Avenue, uh, Matt uh, Planner Orbach has worked closely with the applicant on this application. He is available for questions at the end of the presentation, but due to the unique circumstances, I'll be doing the presentation this evening. So the applicant is proposing a 367 square feet of first and second story additions to an existing 1,457 square foot two-story non-conforming single-family residence located, located at 1515 Prospect Avenue within the R1 single-family residential zoning district. 
The existing residence at 1515 Prospect Avenue is a non-conforming two-story single-family residence. The lot is in the Jewel Box neighborhood and is surrounded by one and two-story single-family homes. Before you on the um, screen this evening is the existing site plan showing the single-family home footprint and a large driveway in the front yard. The proposed site plan is shown on this slide. The existing residence is, is non-conforming because the second story encroaches into the required front and second story side setbacks and the garage encroaches into the front setback. The applicant submitted the required 80% non-conforming calculation, which demonstrates that the proposed alterations do not exceed the 80% of the present fair market value of the structure, so the alterations are permissible. Within this slide, you see the existing first and second story. Next, we'll move on to the proposed floor plan. The applicant is proposing 637 square feet of first and second story additions that include a master bedroom and an extensive remodel. The area in green is the new landscaping for the site. As seen in this slide, um, are the second story additions. So a new staircase going up on the side and then two areas of the existing home will be removed to make to ensure that the house stays within the maximum floor area. This slide shows the existing elevations. Next are the proposed elevations. The proposed remodel will utilize stucco siding on the first and second story with a Spanish tiled roof. The applicant is proposing several improvements within the public right of way including new curb and gutter, depressed driveway approach, landscaping, and two permeable paver strips for one new off-street parking space. The Public Works Department has reviewed the plan and supports the proposed improvements with the issuance of a minor encroachment permit. The project complies with the zoning code for the R1 district. Um, staff has worked very closely through multiple revisions on this project and this evening staff is recommending the planning commission approve project 19-0267 based on the conditions of approval and findings found in the staff report thank you are there any questions for the staff hearing this is this is commissioner Wells. I, have, I just have one question um I see that they um, changed their rear second story window to comply with the Arkansas uh, request that it be four feet um, off the ground. Is that anywhere in our code or is that just something we're asking them to do because they had a flat roof? And if that's the case, is, is it something that we're going to try to enforce because of, uh, because of them having a flat roof if it comes up on uh, other homes? So this is something that, this, oh, go ahead, Matt. I was going to say, uh, the precedent for this was set with 511 Escalona, um, where there was a flat roof that uh, an applicant was planning to use in the future as a deck when the zoning code uh, is adopted by the planning, the Coastal Commission. Um, so uh, this applicant, that came up at Arkansas and the applicant was willing to have the windows raised. Uh, so just to make sure that there wasn't roof access until that code is adopted and they were able to put in the, the deck up there. Yeah, and and I'm and I'm glad that the applicant was willing to comply with that. Um, I guess again, my concern is one, it's not necessarily in our code. It's something that we've looked at. But if we look at, um, which is being a retired fire guy, I look at these uh, escape routes for these folks. So a typical fire in a two-story house happening in the kitchen is going to run up the staircase, which would block off or impede their ability often to get to the front of the house and that may be their viable option is going out so i just hate to uh, unnecessarily make people um, change something based on what we perceive as could be a problem as opposed to let them be an adult and then if they violate it then we, we deal with it then so those, those are just my comments Thank 
case. Any other questions for staff? Um, I, I kind of wanted to second um, TJ's sentiment. This is Commissioner Kirchner. Um, I not only from an escape route perspective, but I, I felt reading through the staff report, I felt it was a little, even with Escalona, I think that was the last project that they made the windows um, a little bit, the, the sill of the window higher, or at least Arkansas requested that that be done. Um, I, I feel that if, if it's, if it's their design intention to have a larger window and it's not obviously a door, I, I don't see the reasoning for making people raise their sills. But it's, I mean, it, it's just a comment, but. So this is Commissioner Wilk. Can I chime in since no one, I raised my hand and no one calls on me? <laughs> I can see your hand. <laughs> so, uh, I agree with the previous two comments, but my question for staff is uh, if if we did not uh, want to insist that they have the four foot raised window, is the proper procedure to ask for a continuance so that we can uh, get the uh, applicant an opportunity to resubmit his drawings and if he, if he so chooses, and then uh, allow public comment and, and, and then review this again at the next meeting? I believe you just yeah. include in your motion uh, the option for the applicant to return to the originally designed windows. Yeah, I don't think we'd be doing the applicant any favor continuing the uh, hearing. <laughs> well, I, my concern is that, uh, that uh, if we change the um, the ruling that public comment doesn't get a chance to weigh in. In other words, there's now an opportunity that there might be a deck there and neighbors might complain and we've kind of made this ruling without them getting a chance to complain. And this is Commissioner Ruth. I think if the applicant is certainly agreeable to the Planning Commission's recommendation, that we should go along with that and not propose anything new that could delay the project for them. That's fine. Yeah, I think Commissioner Wilson has a good point. It's, uh, it's not likely, it's, but we don't know for sure. And it's, it's not a good practice to uh, uh, change the application in a way that's more favorable to the applicant without people knowing that's gonna happen. Okay, so we now open the public hearing on this. And once again, the public hearing will be by means of email and we will allow three minutes for public comment. So we'll be reconvened at 722. I'm monitoring public comment through a separate device. I'll, if we get public, I'll bring it up after the three minutes.
We are receiving public comment from the applicant. The first public comment says, I agree with the staff report, and that is from the applicant. The, that came in earlier. The second public comment, which was just received, um, says, we do not want a continuance. Also from the applicant, I assume. That's from the applicant as well. Next, there's public comment from Anthony Rave. Um, and the public comment says, I feel the project would greatly improve the neighborhood. However, I would not want a rear deck to ever be added. And that is that public comment. And those are the three public comments regarding 1515 Prospect Ave at this time. Okay, we will close the public hearing and we're gonna uh, have each of the commissioners provide input, if any, uh, one by one. So we'll start with Commissioner Christensen. You have to unmute. Yep, I got it. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't suggest having a continuance on this project by any means. I was just commenting. My previous comment was was just to address the fact that I've seen two different projects having to raise windows that were previously, previously designed as larger windows. And I just thought that was kind of a, an overstep in my opinion, but that's all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't con want to continue. Commissioner Ruth? Uh, I believe the applicant has stated his desire not to change the plan and go along with the staff recommendation. So I would support that. Commissioner Will? I agree. And I would just like to thank the applicant for investing in our community. Commissioner Welch? Um, I support the project and I appreciate um, both the neighbor and the applicant uh, sharing their view so I support in fact I would uh, move that we approve 1515 Prospect Avenue out of 19067. Okay just for the record I, I should uh, have input which is basically to uh, agree with everyone so there's a motion do we have a second? Christensen gives a second. Ooh. That's Commissioner Christensen? Okay so we have a motion and a second. The motion is to approve the application. And I don't have the number with me, but uh, Nine. Oh, here it is. Project number 19-0267 with the conditions of approval and findings as set forth in the staff report. All in favor, we're gonna have to do a roll call. So I'll, I'll do the roll call. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Commissioner Ruth? Aye. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. Commissioner Welch? Aye. And Chairman? Uh, yes, so that passes unanimously. So the next item, why don't we just uh, go in the order that they're on the agenda. Um, so uh, I will be recusing myself from this due to uh, a proximity conflict and I'll turn it over to Vice Chair Ruth. Hey, thank you, Commissioner Newman. Uh, this is item B, a public hearing for 1601 41st Avenue, a sign permit for new wall signs for the new outdoor supply hardware company located in the CC Community Zoning District. Thank you, Planning Commission. Um, the applicant is requesting two new wall signs for a business located at 1601 41st Avenue in the Community Commercial Zoning District. The application requires, um, um, sorry, the application requires Planning Commission approval under the existing Master Sign Program. 
The new outdoor supply hardware store is one of the major commercial tenants within King's Plaza Shopping Center. The site is located within Capitola's 41st Avenue Commercial Corridor. The multi-tenant building is near the corner of Capitola Road and 38th Avenue. The site indicated, indicating the wall signs on the screen. Both signs face into King's Plaza. So the primary sign is facing 41st Avenue and the second sign B is the nursery sign which faces into King's Plaza into the parking lot. Shown on the slide is the um, front entry sign over the front entry which is oriented towards 41st Avenue. And the sign B, the nursery sign, is facing into the parking lot at King's Plaza. King's Plaza is governed by a master sign program. All signs that exceed 70 square feet require planning commission approval. The proposed sign A on the front of this building is 85 square feet and therefore requires planning commission approval. As shown on this slide, the proposed 85 square foot sign for sign A, there's a maximum limitation for sign A of 100 square feet. So the proposed sign area is in compliance um, the maximum sign height is in compliance, and I'll get into that in a moment. Um, the maximum lettering height complies with a, um, a range of three to five and a half feet, and the maximum logo height also, there, there is no maximum logo on this one. So. The maximum sign height is five feet six inches under the master sign program. Due to the unique shape of the design, staff measured the height as an average, which is less than five feet six inches. Um, if planning commission does not agree with this methodology, the sign could be conditioned to not exceed five feet six inches in total height. I wanted to bring up that in the staff report, there was a typo um, in paragraph two that the OSH, in the OSH sign section stating that the average sign height is five feet two inches. The correct height are listed in the table at um, the average sign height was five feet four and a half inches. The proposed tenant signs C, D, and E are located along 41st Avenue, Capitola Road, and 38th Avenue. The signs comply with the master sign program and would otherwise be approved administratively. Staff recommends the Planning Commission approve project 20-0105 based on the conditions of approval and findings. Thank you, Katie. Are there any comments or questions from the commission before we open the public hearing? No comments from Commissioner Wilkes. Commissioner Wilkes? Uh, no comment from Commissioner Wilk. Commissioner Christensen? No comment from Commissioner. Okay, well, we will take three minutes for public comment. Katie, are you putting that address on the screen? There we go. Yep. So if you'd like to comment on the side and you have three minutes to email public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us.
Commissioner Ruth, I'm seeing no public comment. I'll open it just to share. Okay, there's no public comments. Are there any comments from the commissioners? Commissioner Wilkes? No comment. Commissioner Christensen? No comment. I think it will be a, a nice sign, honestly. It's nice to have that store back again. Commissioner Welch? No comment. Okay, with that, there's no comments on the from the public. Uh, is there a motion to approve the application? I motion, um, this is Commissioner Christensen. I have a motion to approve. Uh, Commissioner okay. Wilk seconds. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We'll do the roll call. And that includes all the conditions, I presume. Commissioner Wilkes? Uh, aye. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Commissioner Welch? Aye. And Commissioner Ruth votes aye. Okay, Chairman Newman, it's back to you. Thank you. That takes us to the uh, third and last public hearing, which is 1850 41st Avenue. Um, and that is, we have the application number here. Conditional use permit amendment for retail cannabis establishment in the community commercial zoning district. Staff report, please. Okay. Uh, good evening, commissioners. And before you is a amendment to a conditional use permit for a retail cannabis establishment at 1850 41st Avenue. This first slide shows the history of the project um, from the time it was selected as a potential retail cannabis license. Then following that there was an appeal. So the effective date for starting the license was August 2nd, 2019. Um, the applicant came to Planning Commission on October 3rd and was granted a CUP. Um, following that, they had a, a deadline of February 2nd in which to get their other licenses in place, their, the CUP, the conditional use permit, as well as the state license. Um, the, the applicant applied for a state license on November 25th, 2019. Their application what they received confirmation that it was received on December 17th. On January 30th, the applicant was informed by the BCC that they were not going to issue them the license without the, co the construction being completed on the building, which was problematic. This applicant um, uh, is, is currently taking over a building in which there is an existing lease, so the construction could not be completed by February. Um, as they're not planning in, to move in until um, the upcoming months. Um, so with that, on January 13th, the applicant, well, the applicant was in touch with the city following the news on the 30th, and after working through the legalities of it on March 13th, um, we directed the applicant to apply for an amendment to the condition. Amending this condition is not outside the realm of what's allowed within a, the cannabis license um, as outlined in the staff report. So the applicant is requesting that condition number 16 be amended um, so that the permit shall expire. And actually we received a letter this past week and due to the current con um, very unique circumstances of our sheltering in place. Originally their request was for May 2nd, 2020, but should any unforeseeable um, hurdles come their way during uh, this, this time, well, they just simply need to pay for their permit is what I understand. Um, they're asking that this be extended the full six months from the February 2nd date, which would um, be extended to August 3rd, 2020. And staff is recommending that the Planning Commission approve the amendment to the conditional use permit based uh, with the ad amended condition, including extending the permit until August 3rd, 2020, in line with the findings 
and condition and amended conditions in the staff report and presentation. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Uh, Commissioner Ruth, I have one. Uh, do we know what their anticipated opening date is? I, at, at this point, I, I know that they, as soon as they um, get occupancy of the site, they want to begin work. And we'll have to do a review under um, this, the closure of how much work can be done immediately. I, I do understand that under the previous order, cannabis was an essential service, was listed as essential service. So we'll be doing a review of that at the time that the building permit will be issued um, and working closely with them. But my understanding is from the time that they get occupancy of the building, they would like to start working, so. So it won't be prior to the August 3rd date? They were hoping to get occupancy, I, I believe, in uh, sooner than the August 3rd date. So are they allowed to, to do that under the provisional license or yes. not having the actual license from the state and there's, there's no liability for the city in allowing them to do that? No, they could move forward with their building permit. Okay, thank you, Katie. Yes. Any other questions? If not, uh, we will open the public hearing and allow three minutes for emails. We'll resume at 743. There is a, a public comment that has been received from the applicant, and I'll take this time while the public can continue to send in messages. Um, and the public comment states, Dear Commissioners, thank you for your time this evening. The Apothecarium team is extremely thankful for the time and work you've provided thus far. We look forward to opening our retail location and serving the citizens of the City of Capitola and surrounding areas. We would also like to thank staff who worked on creating this report and its recommendations. We reviewed the staff report and support its recommendations with the modification that condition of approval number 16 of conditional use permit 19-0408 be extended to six months from the original expiration date to August 2, 2020, or the next business day. As the record indicates, the process through which we worked with the Bureau of Cannabis Control, or BBC, to receive approval of licensure took an unusual amount of time and resources. As with any new department, the BBC was developing its processes, which resulted in changing expectations and requirements. During that time, we worked diligently with the BBC to address any concerns over the application process, oftentimes resulting in several follow-up emails or calls to ensure requested documents were received or questions were answered. Simultaneously, we worked tirelessly with city representatives to maintain momentum full, towards full licensure while recognizing certain local hurdles. The BBC approved our license on March 13th. Now we face additional uncertainties in the finalization of our state licensure. The current COVID-19 crisis in our community seemed unimaginable a mere three weeks ago. We initially requested a three-month extension of Condition 16 through May 2, 2020, believing that it would be sufficient to finalize payment and processing of our state license. However, three days after the letter was submitted, the Bay Area issued the first shelter-in-place order. These new orders, while extremely justified, have resulted in additional delays in our ability to move our project forward and ensure we receive our license from the BCC, even if we were to issue the payment for the license tomorrow. Therefore, we respectfully request that the extension be made for a term of six months from the original expiration date to Monday, August 3rd, 2020. Because we are 
uncertain when the BCC will be able to process our payment for the license, which may have adverse effects on the stipulations of our project with the city, we feel this request is reasonable. A six-month extension will allow us the time to understand the BBC's um, capabilities to process payment and then grant us our license. Additionally, we feel this request for extension is in the best interest of both parties, so we do not have to request an additional extension should additional ex unexpected circumstances arise. Accordingly, and for all the reasons stated above, we support the recommendation of the staff with the edits to extend Condition 16 through August 2nd, 2020. Thank you for your time and consideration, Yanez Carrasco. And that is the only public comment. I'm checking right now to ensure that. Yes, that is the only public comment for this item. So this is the end date of August 2nd and the end date of August 3rd have been mentioned, not that that's a big difference. That's the pick one of those. Yeah, February 6th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, whoever makes the motion can take that into account. But um, we'll close the public hearing. Oh, and um, you see what I'm talking about? Close the public hearing and bring it back to the commissioners. Uh, let's uh, change the order around a little bit. Uh, Commissioner Welch. No comment. Okay, Commissioner Roof. No comment. Commissioner Christensen. Uh, no comment. I, uh, I, I, I think that supporting what they are requesting seems reasonable. Commissioner Wilk. So I uh, kind of feel bad for the applicant for all the red tape that the state and the city has put them through. And I'd like to let the rest of the commissioners know that I asked staff if there was any way we could give them a relief on their reapplication fee uh, because of all the red tape that the city didn't necessarily put them through, but the state, state certainly did. And apparently legal said, well, no, the commission can't do that because effectively that's tapping into the general fund. But, of course, the city council could, so... Um, I guess we don't want to go there, but I, I, I do. I just want to express my uh, sympathy to the applicant for all the red tape they had to go through, and, and I hope they uh, maintain their enthusiasm for this project. That's okay. All. Myself, uh, it's very unfortunate that, that, that this is the time when we really need them in this period of great stress. So uh, <laughs> too bad they had to get delayed, but do we have a motion? Move approval with the amendment to the condition. And Mr. Wilk second. Okay, so the motion is to approve the amendment to the conditional use permit to extend it to August 2, 2020, based on the conditions uh, set forth in the staff report and findings. And roll call. We'll, Excuse me, I Chair. Will do that again, Mr. Roof. Chair Newman. Hi. So you want to do it? I, I, I just wanted to comment before the roll call that I think these are unique circumstances and typically I wouldn't add comment after the public hearing is closed. But another email did come in in support from a Roger Shaheen. And I'd, I'd like to read it. It's just a few sentences just so it's on the record. Um, sure. I have no issue with this. It sounds like... I'm sorry, it, it sounds like they have done a very reasonable job throughout their permit process. I would give them the extension time due to the circumstances today. Good luck, Roger Sheehan. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, we'll add that to the record, and I think uh, we're at Commissioner uh, uh, Wilk. Aye. Commissioner Christensen. Aye. 
Commissioner Welch. Aye. And the chair votes aye, so that passes unanimously. And the next item is the director's report. Okay. Thank you, commissioners. Um, first, I'd really like to thank you this evening for being so flexible during this uncertain time. Um, and I wanted to give you an update on our department and how we are dealing with the current shelter in place. Um, so as you all know, on March 16th, there was an order to shelter in place for the County of Santa Cruz. And this was recently extended on March 31st um, and updated with more specificity than the original order. Okay, so within the planning division, we have, within the shelter in place actually, there's direction that even within your essential services, if you have staff that can work at home, um, can work remotely, that is what is advised. So currently within our planning division, we've got two staff members and they're both working remotely from home. Um, we have updated our system that they're available for any questions. The best route in which to, for the public to be in touch with our planners. And this is very clear on our website if you go to community development. There's very clear directions that you should email planning at ci.capitola.ca.us. You can also call our main number and the phone calls are placed to planners' voicemails in which they will uh, return the call, hopefully by end of day, but definitely within 24 hours. Um, all existing applications that we have in process will be continued to be processed. New applications now require electronic submittal, which I think is a relief for some of our um, applicants in the past that have had to drive over the hill to drop off plans. And um, so we're now taking in applications electronically. We're following up with invoices and then payment currently is by check, but we're updating that system as well to be able to take in electronic payment. Um, new applications once and old once they go through the, the we'll take them through the process with planning commission or if it's an administrative process we'll take them through the process to the point that we'll issue entitlements um, construction for any use is subject to the order that's in place now so we'll review each application and dependent on what type of application is um, if it were a home occupation we could approve that administratively if it's an application for a new development, we'd have to look at the type of development and whether or not it's under the order. If it was an affordable housing development, that could proceed right now under the order and be developed with um, construction. One um, part of the new order that came out is specific to vacation rentals, and I wanted to take a moment to go over that so that we get, uh, this came out today clear direction. So vacation rentals, including those rented through Airbnb, VRBO, and other platforms, are not allowed to operate as such under the revised order. Under the order, only essential businesses are allowed to operate, and travel is prohibited unless for essential services or purposes as defined in the order. These locations may not be used for non-essential leisure travel. Vacation rentals are not an essential business as defined in the order, but they may be allowed to continue operations under certain circumstances related to essential services, such as, the first is providing housing for traveling emergency and public safety personnel, providing housing for traveling medical personnel, providing housing for other essential workers, and providing housing for families attending to critical medical needs of local relatives. More specifically, vacation rentals should not be used by their owners to shelter in place if they have to leave another county to come to their vacation rental. All vacation rental bookings not currently in effect should be canceled through May 3rd, 2020. Current vacation rental occupants are encouraged to return home unless they have no other place to go or are unable to safely travel. So this is just out from the county today. I'll be updating the, our website tomorrow with all of this information. We're also taking a further step in um, Planner Sasanto has been putting together uh, letters that will have uh, for each property owner that owns a vacation rental, they'll receive that. Um, so we're notifying each owner and letting them know of this change. 
Within our building division, um, this has been, there's been major shifts from the first order to the second. Under the first order, housing could continue um, for development. The new order is very specific that only affordable housing projects can continue. Um, and then I'm just gonna quickly go through the list of what's allowed in terms of construction. So projects immediately necessary to the maintenance, operation, or repair of essential infrastructure projects associated with healthcare operations, including creating or expanding healthcare operations, affordable housing that is or will be income restricted, including multi-unit and mixed unit developments, public works projects, if specifically designated as essential government function by the lead government agency, shelters and temporary housing, but not including hotels and or motels, projects immediately necessary to provide critical non commercial services to individuals experiencing homelessness, elderly persons, persons who are economically disadvantaged, and persons with special needs. Construction necessary to ensure that the existing construction sites that must be shut down under this order are left in a safe and secure manner, but only to the extent necessary to do so. And construction or repair necessary to ensure that residents and buildings contain essential businesses are safe, sanitary, and habitable to the extent such construction or repair cannot reasonably be delayed. So these last two are the um, our building division is actually going through all current permits that we have and figuring out where they are in the development process. Um, we don't have any affordable housing developments happening right now. There's the Terra. Terra Court project that just finished with one unit that's actually on the market currently, but, but that has gotten its certificate of occupancy. So basically all the construction that is out there um, for um, commercial and for the development of homes are going to have to shut down once they're found to be safe. Um, and under those last two bullets. So we're, our building official and building inspector today spent the whole day just going through the list of current projects and deciding how each one has to be reviewed individually to see what the next steps are in order to ensure safety um, and to make sure that if any home that, if, if they've got a kitchen that's not working or any plumbing issues, any of that, we've got to you know, maintain that buildings are safe and habitable. So um, just a couple of the questions that we've had coming in, I thought I'd present in case we have any folks out there watching. Um, so if, if I have a contractor scheduled to begin a remodel next week, can I go ahead with this project? Um, and the answer to that would be you must defer your remodel or renovation project unless it is necessary to restore your home to a safe, sanitary, and habitable space and cannot reasonably be delayed. I am midway through a remodel. Can my construction project continue? Residential remodeling projects that are partly completed can continue if delaying the completion would pose a safety, security, or sanitation risk to residents or impact the habitability of the residents. Otherwise, they must be deferred. And lastly, um, the question would be, I have a construction project that will sustain damage if I do not continue to work on it. Can I complete the project if it is not related to provisions of health care, housing, or essential infrastructure? And the answer to that is, yes, you can perform the work on the site, but only to ensure it's, it is safe and secure while it is shut down in compliance with this order. This includes sending employees to the con construction site to secure the site and ensure it does not sustain damage. You can continue construction on the project only if this, if strictly necessary to prevent damage to the project, like completing a roof or ensuring that there's proper drainage after grading has been completed. So with that, that's, those are the most common questions that were being asked. And again, we're looking at each permit that we have issued individually. I also want to say that we, we do have quite a few building applications in the process, which we're going to continue to process and we'll be holding off on issuing the permit until the order is lifted. But um, as permits come in, we'll continue to work on them and be ready to issue them as soon as the order is lifted. So with that, that concludes my director's report and I'm happy to answer any questions. And I thank the public for their patience during this time. And Commissioner Ruth has a question. Yes. Please. Yeah, 
Katie, are there any provisions for enforcement uh, if people use their second homes, their vacation homes over here to shelter in place instead of their uh, principal residence? There are. There's specific um, follow-up that the for enforcement. So we will. Be How would that be enforced? Would that be on a complaint by complaint basis. It would be on a complaint basis. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions regarding the director's report? If not, the next item is a commission comment. Anyone? Let me go one by one. Commissioner Christensen? No comment. Commissioner Welch? No comment. Commissioner Welch? No comment. Commissioner Ruth? Stay safe, everyone. <laughs> okay, myself, I'd like to uh, commend the Community Development Department and the Community Development Director for jumping on this uh, unusual circumstance and getting us ramped up so quickly and so uh, efficiently. It's a uh, really took a lot of effort and uh, it paid off, so thank you. You're welcome. And with that, we will probably be doing this again at the next meeting in May. Uh, so uh, we'll adjourn until then. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Goodbye.